Hello friends, Yossi here. Today we're going to explore the Toronto real estate market for the second half of 2019, so July 1st to December 31st, Q3, Q3 and Q4. Uh, before we start, a quick introduction. I'm going to show you some really good listings and we're going to dive into the real estate market. You ready? Let's go. All right, so this is Yossi Kaplan with Search Realty and Search Mortgage. Fantastic company. Absolutely love it. Um, we also won the uh, uh, 38th uh, spot on the 500 fastest growing company, so 2018. Very good. Congratulations, Sterling Wong, my friend and the guy who owns the company. Fantastic achievement. Uh, it's reporting here 136 employees and uh, growth five years of 1,942%. That's fantastic. Um, Search is an amazing company. It's just a place to be. We are very mobile. We are technical. We're savvy. We like what I, we, we do. If you want to join as an agent, give me a shout. I can uh, give you the lowdown. If you want to be a client, give me a shout. I'll tell you all about it. All right, let's go. Um, Yossi Kaplan, twitter.com slash Yossi Kaplan. That's where I put all my uh, new stuff. If you want some quick info from me, just go here. That's the easiest place to find uh, what I'm doing. Sometimes, you know, it's a weekend. I don't have time to post. A blog post takes hours to post, but I just take the phone. Boom, Twitter. So there you go. That's the Twitter. You can also find me, uh, this channel, on YouTube, youtube.com slash Yossi Kaplan. Lots of videos. Thank you every, very, very much. All the subscribers, the comments up, the comment down. Uh, keep them coming. Please subscribe, comment, and like or dislike. Everything helps. Okay? That's fantastic. Okay, I'm going to jump into um, urbanrealtytoronto.com. which is my main site. I've had it for many years, and I've been uh, loving that site like it's my garden. Uh, making it better, uh, faster, more interesting, hopefully better writing, better everything. Um, here's I, here I post uh, all the important things that come my desk because this site gets a lot of hits. Um, and it's a blog format at the moment. Uh, eight stunning Toronto condos and townhomes you can buy now. So last week I just posted this. Some of these are already sold but not all. And there's eight and it was really like a labor of love here because it's painful to do this. Uh, but expense situation, how the market's on fire, there's not a lot of listings. Price going up, and I picked uh, eight very different uh, listings in my area here, downtown King West, Queen West, you know, uh, 608 Richmond. Believe this one sold 5049, that best deal ever in the neighborhood. Um, 15 Beverly, two bedroom, uh, was listed at 920. Fashion House, two bedroom, uh, 8249. 95 Bathers, these units are amazing. Uh, 1088. 29 Camden, that's a really nice uh, commercial turn into residential. Uh, 1.3, uh, Penthouse at the Thompson, 1.75, A50 Richmond, these townhouses are beautiful, right by Trinity Bellwoods, 198, uh, one more fashion house at 449.9, uh, there's a map here for you, everything you need. Uh, if you want to know if these listings were sold, uh, the best thing to do is just uh, flip me an email, use the contact form right here, or call me if you like, and I'll let you know what's sold and for how much, so you can track actually what's happening in the market, okay? Uh, on the side here, these are the RSS feeds, whatever I post on my other sites, you can see here. So on yossikaplan.com, uh, these are the posts. On Ukraine Luxury Real Estate, these are the posts. Uh, Queen West posts. And here are the live listings, I really like this. So and I keep fine tuning uh, these links. So when you hit Yorkville, it's gonna open the direct search for Yorkville on our search realty site. And it's basically gonna give you Whatever is available in Yorkville in our system, okay, very nice presentation. All you got to do is just go here, click. You may need to log in, register with your email and phone number if you haven't before. And the presentation is phenomenal. This uh, this was just upgraded recently. This is, I believe, uh, Pearson Avenue. Amazing building. The Perry condos. Fantastic. Okay. Um, this is, uh, okay, this is a C. Uh, you can also search by uh, area. So, for example, if I type in Toronto, um, C and then it'll, it'll enable like C1, which is downtown west, from Young until Dufferin, from the water until uh, Bloor, okay? And then you can sort by any way you like. Oh, I lost my uh, sort, sort right here. And uh, let's look at the latest listings. So there you go, 499, 640, 720, 509. It's really all over the place because these are by latest listings. If you want to see most expensive, no problem. Go back to sort, hit price high to low, this one does not have a picture yet, 14.8, not bad, 7.2, 6.1, 4.6, down and down we go, 
or you can do the reverse and look at uh, um, low to high by bat by bet you built and so on and so forth. Remember, uh, in any database, the quality information you see is the quality information that was inputted into the system. And in the MLS system, and the IDX system, and the VAL system, all these systems which are uh, channeled here, okay, and pocket listings too, um, what you see is what you get. So if someone inputted uh, this listing in, the quality of the information will be exactly what they put in, no more, no less. You're just going to get what the, uh, what the age and the listing age on the company put in, okay? You can search homes, condos, townhomes, commercial properties, multifamily, single family. There's a lot of criteria here. Uh, commercial, if I didn't say it. Um, so, so you can really go in and like dig, dig deep in this stuff, okay? Uh, also on Urban, I'm jumping around, but I just want to show you like the vast availability of information that throughout the years I've posted. Uh, also on UrbanRealtyToronto.com, um, on the side, they'll say trending. So this is what people are clicking it at the moment. That changes throughout the day. Um, Heritage Town, 24, uh, 26 Ernest Avenue, uh, sold out. If you want a place here, let me know. And what I'll do is I'll put you on the wait list. If it, just fill this form. Anything that comes, you'll immediately know. I'll just set up a search for you. But you can see these are really gorgeous. Um, sold out from developer. There's a map of condo, more, more, more. Uh, this one I've showed you already. Okay, 1717 Avenue, one of the most sought after buildings on Avenue uh, in Lawrence area. Really lovely, and everyone wants into this building. Uh, one side faces Avenue, the other side, the, the back side, uh, nice and quiet. A lot of two bedroom units, a lot of good designs, lots of crown moldings. Kind of a, a lot of people that left uh, homes in Lawrence Park in the area, maybe uh, Lee Side, you know. Um, Avenue and Lawrence all the way up to the 401, maybe even to Shepherd, uh, coming to this building. But you know, there's just not that many units, especially with all the units are very large in this building. So there it is in all its glory. It's actually lovely. So if you want something in here anywhere else, especially if it's a more unique building, um, you know, another building that comes to mind is Berksy at uh, St. Lawrence Market. Just send, uh, send me a text, email, whatever you like, call me. Now set up a search. When, when that thing comes up, it'll notify you immediately, you know that that moment, okay? So that's cool. Um, Yossi Kaplan, the common new site I launched about just a few months ago. Uh, so here I feature things that I really like. In this case, this is a post within the website about the Harlow 608 Richmond. That's the same one I showed you recently. That sold, that was 5049. I think that's such a good deal. You know, you can still find good deals. If you can find anything like a small one bedroom for half a million that's amazing if you can find a one plus den for 600 to 650 that's amazing if you can find a two bedroom you know recently i was in a in a bidding war uh about a week 10 days ago a weekend ago um at uh 20 minoan that's the eight or twelve thousand dollars not a lot but just to show you, and those two bedrooms uh, go for over $700,000, um, but they're large. They're about 700 square feet, give or take. Parking, nice balcony facing west, so a $1,000 foot with um, parking and, and locker. It's still a good deal, okay? So people say, oh, Toronto is so expensive. Well, but you know, a 1000 buck a foot, um, it's reasonable because um, what you get is, is, you know, what you get is the quality, okay? So buildings like uh, Carnaby, or six or in Richmond, or any building at uh, King West or Queen West, you know, if you can get anything in a thousand resale, you're doing really well because you cannot get anything new construction um, for that price anymore. The new construction prices are way higher. They're 1200, 13, 14, 15, 16, 1800, uh, 41 uh, University starting price at 1650 a foot. Uh, Bjork Ingle King West by West Bank. Uh, 16 to 1800 dollar foot, so 500 square feet unit, around you 750 to 850. There was a video that I made called uh, One Bedroom, One Million, and it's somewhere here. And I'm actually uh, on the street talking about it. Okay, One Bedroom, One Million, there it is, number 111. You can, you can watch it. And you know, they're selling, they're almost sold out. They're gonna launch the last mountain, the last uh, uh, gobble of condo, the tallest one, the west one, uh, very soon, like within the couple, this week, next week kind of thing, and you're going to see crazy prices, but you know what, everything before already sold, why would not sell? There you go, Junction House here, you can pick up something for $1,000 a foot, 
phenomenal quality, um, really nice developers, good sales team. Everything is good about Junction House. They really made a huge effort to make it into a home, okay? So invest in places that, you know, there's longevity. Um, if you watch my video called The Three L's, I talk about longevity. Uh, it's somewhere that there's the three L's. How to invest like a boss. Okay, very important video. Uh, because I explain the three factors that if you look at, you will actually realize um, what's important for investing. And once again, we're going back to basics of investing, which is long-term investing. And the reason why I talk about long-term, because, you know, flipping is great and, my friends, my colleagues, clients, people I know made so much money flipping condos. But when the market is stabilizing, because, you know, we went up so fast. I'm going to jump here to, um, to uh, condos.ca. I punched in King West. And you can see the, 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 look at this. In 2015, the average uh, of a condo, uh, <clears throat> in 2016, it was uh, 681 a foot. And it was appreciation of 10.4, so 10.5%. Look what happened in 2017. It went by 23.35%. The price went up by you know, $180 a foot. That's crazy, but it's real. Then another $105 a foot in 2018 at 12.5%. And now we're slowing down towards that magic uh, number of $1,000 a foot, which I believe we will already pass because every new building, 543 Richmond, um, BIG, uh, Bjork Ingle, West Bank King West, you know, Rush Condos, they... they the lowest you can find some is about 13 now, okay? 15 will be your average, okay? You want to check the downtown? I think I have it open here. I did. Okay, great. So the average downtown is showing us a 7.8% increase in price year over year, change in values. Now, the way I understand year over year means from today, 365 days back. So that's serious. So what I see for quarter two, quarter, uh, sorry, quarter three, Quarter four, second half of 2019 is huge appreciation. Like we're going into appreciation. One of the videos I talked about 15% appreciation for 2019. And for one moment I go, is it really going to happen? Well, I think it will. 15%, uh, 20%, you know. Um, so 15%, uh, Toronto Realtor Yosegama predicts 15% market up. Will it happen? I think it will. Now, you know. Areas that are, are really happening are desired because they're close to jobs, they're close to the city amenities, and you can get along in Uber or TTC, God bless them, they got a lot of problems, uh, or walk or ride your bike or, you know, get a lift, whatever it is, uh, they're going to do very, very well. The area which is secondary to public transport always do a little less. That's why everyone wants the area which is close to public transport and willing to pay more for them, Okay. But you got to remember um, that when you invest in a giant building on Young Street, especially um, north of uh, 401, there's so many of those that in case that we had some kind of a market slowdown for whatever reason, which is going to be global these days because everything's connected, um, in that case, you know, in my opinion, these buildings are first at risk. That's why I like to find these cute designer buildings which are built by serious companies. And I've uh, spoken to you before about uh, West Condos, which I really, really like. And the reason I like West Condos, I forget where I put it. I think it's somewhere here. Uh, West Condos, 89 Niagara Street. The reason I like this project is because this is backed by one of the largest development families in Canada. It's a, it's a billion dollar plus family business. Okay? They're not going out of business any day. It's just not going to happen. The quality is fantastic. The uh, brand buildings for Altera, they've done phenomenal work, including 36 Hazelton, uh, with the whole joke with Marky Mark living in there. He never did. I think it was some kind of a PR stunt. Um, nonetheless, this West Condos, and I've sold a couple units here, and they have some nice penthouses, still at reasonable prices, around the 1200 mark. Um, very, very good in my opinion. This is where you're going to get your value at the smaller boutique buildings, two to 400 units built by a reputable developer, okay? These guys are building. They're going for it. They're doing it. They spare no expense. I mean, these guys built West, uh, um, sorry, a studio on Richmond West, you know, the two towers uh, on Richmond, just east of um, John Street there, okay? So this is serious business. Uh, that's why I like a building like West Condo because the design is very, very good. It's sharp. The floor plans are very good. 
This is to me is a prime, prime, prime acquisition for investor. Okay, that's how I think. That's how I see things. I'm not coming here to like find a unit and send it to the next person in line. That's not my thing. Although we've done it before and we're good at it, but my thing is quality investments. It's going to weather any storm and it's going to give me solid, solid returns for many, many years. And this is what I've been doing for nearly 20 years now. Okay, even before I was an agent, when I was just investing in condos, buying them. Um, you know, just for investing, this before, I was doing this already years before I became uh, a licensed agent. I was working with developers, working with real estate agents, working with brokers, working with companies who market uh, new construction. Because my, my family background is construction, and I just love it. So I would have my regular job during the day, and I'd, in evenings I would like fix people's computers and do some tech work for them. And at and the weekends, you know, I didn't go drinking, I went to work at condo sales centers to learn more about the business of pre-construction, even then, because I realized that's going to be the next thing, and it happened, okay? It happened because if you keep to quality, and whatever you buy, you don't need much, but just buy quality. If you buy a shirt, buy a quality shirt. If you buy shoes, buy quality shoes. Buy, buy something that is useful and will last you so you get value, okay? Uh, people mistake price and value. That's not the case. Value is something that what people will pay you for, and they pay you good money for it, doesn't matter when, today, tomorrow, 10 years, 20 years from now. So I search for value. When I look at these hundreds and hundreds of listings, I scan them every morning, and I look for value. And once you realize what the value is, you go in there, and you check it, and you see what it can be. Does it work for me? Does it make sense for me? And then I assess there's value in this property, okay? And then I go from there. All right, so that's the point here. Heritage, we saw that, we saw that. YossiKaplan.com. Okay, um, before I go into the market analysis of the Toronto real estate market second half of 2019, Toronto real estate market for Q3, Q4, 2019, I want to go over uh, this article here. Five Toronto Condo Investment You Can Buy Now. This is York Luxury Real Estate, which is my million dollar plus uh, blog. Okay, so you got a penthouse, a King Blue. King Blue turned out really, really nice. It's almost done. Um, I think it looks really, really good. I really like it. The location is fantastic. I mean, that, you know, you cross Spadina, you King West, but you really, you downtown entertainment district or whatever you want to call that area. The place to be. That's the old um, Westinghouse building uh, incorporated into the structure. That was a big uh, parking lot before. Okay, so that's that. Tim Morrison, that's, uh, that's one of the first uh, free buildings on uh, King West. There was a penthouse there for 1.3. Uh, there's a Thompson 545. You know, these are good investments, my friend. My friends, these are good investments. You look at one bedroom for half a million. It may cost you a little more now at the Thompson at the Fashion House, but even so, it's still a good investment in my opinion. Now, you may want to put more than 20% in, um, but it doesn't matter to me because these days it's all about value, buying, and holding, and let someone else pay the fees for you, the maintenance fees, the, ta the municipal taxes, the mortgage. I'm just going to put the initial payment, and then... I'm basically going to balance my payment to match my uh, monthly expenses. So I'm even. If I want to make some money, I put a bit more deposit. If I want, to, or if I want, if I have less deposit, I put less deposit. And if I need to top up, I can. Or maybe I get a uh, six months lease for a higher, higher term. I've done a lot of that. I've also done a lot of like four and five thousand uh, dollar leases a month. Those are usually. You know, someone from the Blue Jays or a hockey guy or a basketball guy will come from out of town. They get a contract one or two years. Sometimes it was people that work at the airport. They come for like a couple of years. So we lease them these uh, quality two-bedroom furnished apartments. Those units that we leased them before will be, you know, six to 10000 now. But that's okay because, you know, the Blue Jays will just pay for it. So I've received a note from the Blue Jays and the checks from the Blue Jays. And they pay for whomever is playing for them. That's how it works. Uh, 1181 Queen West Condos. That's the very end of the edge of the triangle there. That's where the coffee time used to be. This is a beautiful building by scale. It's got terraces on one side, and then it's got kind of a triangular shape. I really like it. There's some units left here, some quality units. Give me a shout. I'll give you the latest prices. Um, 38 Avenue, Penhouse, 8.1 million. That's a Prince, Prince Arthur residences. That's dope. All right. So that was YorkvilleLuxuryRealEstate.com. There's a lot of good stuff here that I keep posting. I got this two-bedroom corner unit assignment at 609 Avenue. Uh, 1580 Avenue Rose on Penhouse is left there. That's a very good buy, in my opinion. 
townhouses on Florence Street, they come and go, they go real quick, uh, some penthouse reviews, and so on and so forth, okay? All right, um, I'm jumping into the HuffPost.ca real estate section, and before we start, I, re I remind you that all media is fake media, all news is fake news. So why are you looking at this EOC? Well, you know, this is what it is. Um, a, a reporter these days, and you know, the HuffPost does not pay the reporters, or maybe paying them very little. Um, so you got to think of the, the, the motives and the motivation. Why would someone write an article for free and what quality this article would be? Now, it doesn't mean it's going to be a bad quality or low quality, but the media tends to play things in a certain way that may not actually reflect what's real, okay? Um, show you something here. Ah, there we go. Um, I typed it into DuckDuckGo, okay? So Google cannot track me. I also use a VPN. USD value over years chart, and it comes with the purchasing, and then I'm going to jump back to uh, to HuffPost, and I'll show you how they connect. The purchasing power of US dollar, 1900, 2003, it's right here. Basically, one US dollar in 1900 these days, 2019, is worth about two cents what it was worth uh, in 1900, 118, 119 years ago. So it lost 98%, 99% of its value. How long can we maintain this before we need to basically announce a new dollar, okay? So if you put one dollar under your mattress 119 years ago, it's worth one or two cents today. And think about the purchase value. What you could have bought with one dollar in the 1900s was probably quite a bit, right? Maybe you paid your rent, uh, had a couple good meals, paid some shovels to dig gold, whatever it was. Um, and now you can buy nothing with that stuff. Okay, if you do the same exercise with the Canadian dollar, uh, it's awful. Okay, this is just from 1971. We lost over 90% from 1971. And look what happened when we print the money. The more money we print, okay, the less the value is. So somehow our government is managing to like keep it afloat somehow. Maybe it's because we got the oil in the ground or maybe they cooked the books. I don't know what's going on here. But the more money you print, the less the value you have. Because, you know, if uh, this cup of tea right here, lemon tea, very good, made it myself in my cracked little cup, uh, you know, cost me a dollar yesterday, why would it cost me $10 today? Okay, what's the point? I mean, everything here is 10 times less, so the cost of the goods is going to be 10 times more. It's inverse relation, okay? That's the problem. And you can see, this is this is global. This is true to everything. You know, there's no more local markets. Everyone's connected. We all kind of the same. Here's the GBP, purchasing power and currency in circulation. That's the same thing. It's like if you print more money, the value goes down. So what are you going to do? Where are you going to put? What's going to happen to this money? You buy real estate. That's why the price of real estate has to come up. You know, you buy real estate. You buy stocks. But stocks, you don't know what's going on because you have no access to the books. Maybe the guy, you know, takes your money. They sell some stocks and made a billion dollars and they go and have a big party. Is that efficient using your money? No. But in real estate, you know, it's very, very efficient. Um, you got your condo fees, you got your municipal taxes, you got your mortgage. That's it. Tenant pays the hydro, tenant comes in, pays you the rent, you subtract all your expenses, whatever you have left over, that's yours. That's your profit. Take that profit times 12, divide by your initial investment, you get your ROI, okay? If you need me to explain more about this, uh, put a comment below. I'll make a video on how to calculate ROIs. Okay, um, so I reviewed um, the inflation and the built-in inflation. And when people tell me, you know, the market's going to come down, how can it come down if we have no leverage, we have no hedge, okay? Where are people going to put their money? Where, where is it going to go, okay? Mm, let me think. Gold, not so much. You look at the gold, it's, it's not doing that great. Um, what are you going to buy? Stocks? You have no control over it. You don't know what's going on with it, okay? So me and you, just like normal investors, immigrant like me, and like many of us here, you know, all we know is real estate. We just know construction. We know how to build. We go, roll up our sleeves, and get dirty. And that's what we do. And then when we have enough money, we just buy real estate with it. That's what we do. 90% of all world millionaires, especially in the States and in Canada, that's what they've done. They're not millionaires. They just have regular jobs like you and me, but what they do is they just save their money and they invest it, okay? They invest. That's why they call it investors. They invest for the long term and then they roll it in the generation, the family, generation to the generation to the generation. You know, the first one can make a few millions and the, and the second generation and follow 
the footsteps and obviously have all the knowledge and a little bit of luck, right time, right place, can double, triple, you know, 10 times that in the third generation, you're looking at billions. It, it happens, and it happens quickly. So we're going to jump back, like I said, into real estate. I'm going to show you a couple of things, okay? I, I'm not even going to go into the articles. There's no need. You can just look at the, look at the captions here and figure it out, okay? So another disappointing month is Canadian home sales prices fizzle, okay? What does that mean? It means that the prices came up so quickly. You saw this here. They're just coming up so quickly that we need to kind of cool down a bit. They're still coming up. And there's another piece of news that came out that said that there's a lot of like uh, black money, you know, like unregulated money flowing into Canada. So that's a government thing, okay? The government knows that dirty money is coming to Canada. It's buying BC, it's buying Ontario. And if you have bags of cash you didn't really work for, you just go and buy houses, you launder that cash because when you sell the house, you get legit money back, okay? That's what happens. So if you get like... <laughs> like a bag full of cash and you can you can convert that into a house you're done you did really really well for yourself but the problem is everyone around you is losing because suddenly you push the price up you have no mortgage on that property and everyone else looking oh my god that house was sold two million all the price have to come up and when it happens over and over and over again that's a problem and the other thing is you know we have so many immigrants just like me how do you know that an immigrant like me or anyone else some uncle send them a million dollars and go buy property. This is going to be the family's treasure in Canada, okay? But the money shows up from my foreign bank account, whatever country I come from, under my name, comes to Canada under my name. I buy it under my name. But you know, because we're a tight family, we come from the same tribe, it's really that's everyone's that's everyone's property. Okay? So that could be another reason why the price of real estate is going up. Because we don't know where the money is coming from. So I'm not blaming the immigration itself, but our government needs to investigate and report to us what the hell is going on. Okay, that's very important. Because if there is such a thing, um, and you can stop that, then you know there'll be less purchases of all cash, high expensive properties, and it, it's going to have to trickle down because somebody brings a small bag of cash, only a million, a half a million, by a small... And, if that stops, and I don't know how, what's the size of that you know, illegal money coming in, but if you stop that, we should see some kind of a cool down. But if you were the government and all your income comes from one source, and that's taxes, okay, Re, um, land transfer tax, Toronto land transfer tax, HST, GST on uh, new construction, you know, whatever it is, and of course, taxing on the real estate construction uh, the construction industry itself and the real estate industry itself. So everyone involved in real estate and the and, uh, construction industry is all, you know, we're all paying taxes, we're paying HST, whatever you consume, so on and so forth. That's going to slow down the market and the government's going to get choked. Okay, so the government has a big problem here, but we have to pay attention to where is that money coming from? What's going to happen if the money stops and the market starts to come down and then the government's making less income in taxes? What is it going to do? And how is it going to affect us as Canadians? It's very, very important. Okay, because eventually it's going to affect the market too. But nonetheless, don't ever forget inflation is here. It's part of the system. It's here to stay. So if we print more money, you know, here's more money, guys, but you can't buy anything as the price went up. That's what you're seeing. Okay, uh, cannabis industry pushing up price in the house price. Okay, fine. That's we know that. Um, banning bully offers won't make Ontario real estate any more fair. That is absolutely correct. I agree with this. What, you, what we want to do is the multiple offers. What I want to see as an investor, as a real estate agent, as someone who is interested in finance, I want full disclosure of all prices. So if the agent, if, if I'm the listing agent and I get three offers, I will tell everyone, you know, my highest offer is 700. Or, you know, my, uh, or maybe I'll report all the offers. I don't know. But it, I think that if you're in a multiple bid situation, you should know what the highest offer is. I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, right now, as agent, we're not allowed if there's multiple offers. If I'm on the listing side representing the seller, I'm not allowed to tell you what the high, how much the higher offer is, are there any conditions, nothing. I cannot not, what the deposit, nothing. I, can, I can't say anything. It's illegal. I'm going to lose my license if I did that. And if I'm on the buying side working for a buyer like I did last week and we did not get it, uh, I don't know how much more to bid. 
maybe I start a lower bid just to check it out because you know they they put uh, the initial price much lower than what the market average uh, value for that unit is. But how much do I know to put more? So I think it's more fair for everyone if this will be in the open. Okay. On and on and on. Uh, IMF says IMF is the International Monetary Fund. Don't listen to them. Okay. That's just a whole mess. Uh, read about them. You understand? It's it's not. I don't like them. Okay. Uh, criminal activity may be worsening in Toronto home affordability. So that's what I was talking about is if I got a whole bunch of cash, no mortgage, I'm pushing prices up, okay? And BC Realtors blame politicians in the tell about 170 is because if I stop the bag of cash coming in from overseas, if I stop the overseas money, that's what's going to happen. That's, that's, that's the other side of the pendulum, okay? So this is, how, this is how I look at the news. I don't really bother too much with what they say. I look at the title, I look at the caption, I kind of figure out what they want to tell me, okay? But here's interesting. Harder than ever to go to from, harder than ever to go from renting to owning a condo in Canada, RBC. Absolutely true. Because when you look at the rental prices, they're so high, but someone who's renting, you know, you think, but more or less rental covers uh, the mortgage and the expenses, more or less, you know, give or take, but the renters don't have the initial deposit, which just keeps growing, you know? I bought my first properties with initial deposit of five and ten thousand, but now you can't do anything under a hundred. So you know how many people you know have five thousand dollars? Many of us. How many people you know have a hundred thousand dollars? Not so many. How many people you know have two hundred thousand? You know it's it's the, it's very thin at the top, and that's the problem. Okay, on and on it goes, but you get my point. My point is there's a few factors here. The first factor is inflation that built the economy because our economy is built on inflation. The second factor is that there's some dirty money coming in and it's starting to come up in the news more and more and more. Uh, and you see it with the BC article here. I don't know what that is. Uh, not <laughs> yeah, they just they're just not offering any good solutions, okay? Because if they will, they're gonna have to collect less taxes and they can't. They're like they're addicted. The government is addicted to taxes and the media is addicted to lying to you. So watch out for those. Okay, I'm not running anytime soon. Okay? Um, get the information, get the right information. Um, my thing is for the Q3 and 4, second half of uh, 2019 for Toronto, I think prices will keep rising. I hope not too much, but I think they will because there are not enough listings and there are not enough properties on the market. I got a call today. You know, we're launching the last 200 units at this such and such condo. Come and lunch tomorrow. I, I'm busy tomorrow. I already got them. I'm actually going doing some um, showings tomorrow at lunch. I'm very happy that I am doing the showings, but I can't go to that thing. But it will sell. It will sell because there's just not enough units. Okay? Not enough units. Inflation built in. High taxes. Price going to go up. That's it.